Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much for having me here. I have to say it's a real, a real honor uh, to be among so um, eminent panelists and, and key speakers. And for me, most importantly, it's a great pleasure to be able to talk about a subject that is um, very close to my heart as um, You've been told I've been covering uh, DPRK for the last four years, advoca advocating for uh, humanitarian assistance for the most vulnerable people in North Korea. And it's not always a subject that's e easy to, to advo advocate for, and particularly uh, in terms of, uh, of fundraising. Um, so um, I work for the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, which is the department, uh, the wing of the UN that, um, as the name says, coordinates humanitarian assistance, which means that we don't <coughs> deliver assistance per se, food or tents uh, or water, but we try to bring together all the actors that do. And that's UN agencies, but also civil society, NGOs, and the rest, to try and uh, have a better picture of what the humanitarian needs are in each one of the countries that we cover. Um, how can we respond to these needs and who can do it in, in the best way? Uh, so it's very much about uh, coordinating partners, pulling information together, and then advocating for the people uh, in need, and that's uh, worldwide. I focus on Asia and uh, DPRK in particular. Um, we've got a a colleague, actually, who's based in Pyongyang, and so all the, the credit to everything I'm going to say today goes to her. I'm just her voice uh, in New York to further advocate for, the, for her work and, most importantly, the work of all the agencies that work in DPRK um, to provide assistance to the people in need. Um, I will maybe uh, start my presentation by um, presenting the latest product that we have um, uh, launched about uh, two months ago at the end of March, which is the Humanitarian Needs and Priorities for DPRK, um, and then maybe share a few thoughts um, following my recent visit. I was uh, in Pyongyang and uh, North Korea just last month. Um, and I could maybe uh, testify to a few of the things that I've seen there and then maybe just share a few thoughts um, with respect to the progress that I've witnessed over the last four years since I've been covering this, uh, this file. I know we're limited in time, so if I'm going far beyond, just hop up and down or make signs and I'm also happy to, to maybe further answer questions later. So the needs and priorities document, which I should have brought if you want to, there you go, if you can just wave it up and show what it is. Um, so basically, uh, one of the core products um, that uh, OCHA tries to produce in any country where we are um, is an overview of the humanitarian needs in a country. And um, as I said, who is present in terms of agencies and what they can do to respond. Um, in the case of uh, North Korea, it's, uh, well, DPRK, it's called the, the Humanitarian Needs and Priorities, and we've just issued the one for 2017, a couple of months ago, and have determined, that's um, the front cover, as you saw, um, the humanitarian needs of the, the people of North Korea are quite uh, significant. If you look at them in terms of putting them in the broader perspective of the humanitarian appeals worldwide, Actually, the appeal for North Korea is very high in terms of people in need, but actually very low in terms of the ask, in terms of funding that is required to be able to respond and really uh, implement some life-saving activities. So um, based on the information we had, uh, there's 18 million people in North Korea who are in need of humanitarian assistance. And um, not only to respond to the, the, the crisis as it is, which is mainly food security, nutrition, water and sanitation and health, but also to help them uh, prepare for the um, disaster, disasters that are um, regularly occurring in the country and particularly uh, floods. <coughs> and this is a picture um, of, uh, of the flooding from uh, last September in North uh, Hamyang province. So the needs and priorities document, as I said, targets actually 13 million people out of the 18 million that we have targeted, and very much in the areas that I've outlined, which are water and sanitation, food, nutrition, and health. Um, you have um, five UN agencies who have come together, as well as seven NGOs, to come to this uh, to this. Uh, project um, to try and respond to these uh, to these needs. And these are the three goals that they really want to, to focus on. Obviously, the needs are humongous, but they focused on the nutrition, access to basic services, and strengthening res resilience. In terms of figures, um, for example, a child dies every hour of a preventable disease in North Korea, and a woman every day of a preventable disease in North Korea. So 
talking about figures, they are quite, uh, quite staggering. And preventable diseases means that if we had the right programs in place, we could actually avoid this uh, happening. So the activities that are implemented <coughs> are very much life-saving. Um, I won't go into details, I think, of each one of the, um, of the, of the activities because that would take too, too much. Uh, but I think what's important to, to know is that um, UN agencies and NGOs are present uh, almost throughout the country and try to uh, respond to the needs of the people throughout the country. Uh, the question I often get when I advocate for the uh, humanitarian uh, organizations and projects are, how do you know that the money actually goes to the, to the projects? How do you know that you're actually helping the people? So I think it's an important point to be made, which is there are very thorough um, monitoring mechaniz mechanisms in place. And we also have a policy which is uh, no access, no mon monitoring, meaning no assistance. So assistance is only provided to areas where the agencies have access to, and not only to implement the program, but also to then be able to, to monitor. Uh, second point I'd like to, like to make on monitoring um, is that while, yes, there is uh, a need, like in many other countries, to inform the government previously to the areas that the agencies want to access to, to monitor, um, it doesn't mean that they actually give names and addresses of the sp specific places where they're going. It's random monitoring. It's just a county that's selected. But then once our colleagues from the World Food Programme, for example, goes, it's, uh, the monitoring is done based on random sampling uh, on, a, on a tablet, and uh, that's on the day of the monitoring, do they know actually who they're going to talk to and check that the assistance indeed is going to the right person. So I think in that respect, it's important to understand that the $114 million that are requested to support the vulnerable people of DPRK for 2017 is money that goes to programs that are monitored and do make um, a difference on the ground. Um, so there's the breakdown on, of, of each one, um, and this is the, uh, the as I said, the, the presence that uh, the humanitarian agencies have on the ground, because I also find that there's a lot of um, mistrust on the fact that we actually have access to, to each one of the areas. As you see, apart from, from one county, we, we very much have access to, to the whole country. The second point I wanted to make was, um, over the last four years, uh, I have seen achievements um, from, from our activities. First of all, in terms of the, the, the document itself, when I first joined four years ago, there was no such document as a humanitarian um, needs and priorities document because the government wasn't comfortable in being labeled as having humanitarian issues. It's not the first uh, and certainly not the last government to be in that situation, but it was just not something that they were supported to, supportive of. But <coughs> building trust over the years and and having them understand the need for agencies to be able to fundraise, to be able to implement the pro projects that they actually are very much welcoming. They understood the need for, for this, uh, for this uh, document to be pulled together. And not, not only they've accepted, accepted it, accepted it sorry, over the, the years, but actually they have now even asked us to ensure that we do issue it every year. So we've gone from not wanting to be labeled anything uh, humanitarian to actually making sure that we do uh, advocate for the, the most vulnerable people in DPRK and asked us to issue this document every four years. Uh, second progress. Um, they actually, actually do endorse the document. I'm often asked if the government is aware that we're producing this. So yes, they are. And yes, they see it before it comes out. Um, over the years, I've seen less and less uh, comments. And for example, for this document, uh, the process was very smooth. They, uh, the government only kept it a, a few weeks and then uh, said it was good to go. Third progress with respect to this document that I think is worth noting um, when we did finally manage to issue it a few years ago, uh, the government was very keen for it to be exclusively about uh, UN agencies' programs, understanding that the, the UN agencies were willing and uh, had to fundraise for their activities. As I said, OCHA coordinates the work of all partners. So for us, it was very important to provide a holistic picture of what the situation is and not just what the UN can do, but all the other actors that are also present. And that includes some representatives of, um, on the panel today. 
Um, initially, the government was not um, in favor of such a, a global uh, a vision. But again, over the years, I think building trust, and that would be my uh, key point if there was one to keep from, uh, from today's presentation, uh, you can build trust, and we have seen progress. And now you do have uh, NGOs um, and SDC actually present in the, uh, in the document. Um, maybe last point, um, achievements. Um, over the years, the UN and the NGO programs in country have made a difference. Uh, the screening uh, for malnutrition has gone from 40% um, um, to 90%, 16% to 90%. Um, here you can see human immunization coverage. Uh, we've gone to 43% 40, uh, to 96% in 1916. So there is there is huge progress that has been made. Um, and. Uh, the screening of malnutrition, actually the progress from 16 to, to 90, it was just done over the last two years. Um, of course, if you can screen malnutrition and act fast, uh, that's a baby that you save. And um, it's obviously of es essence. Uh, time is of essence, which means that uh, funding is uh, of essence. Part of my role uh, in New York is to uh, not only bring all the agencies together here to ensure that we're providing the right support to colleagues in the field, but also um, fundraise for, for our humanitarian program programs. It's obviously not the easiest um, of tasks, especially in the current uh, political context. Uh, as humanitarians, we try to ensure that we are perceived as being neutral and that we are there to provide assistance to everybody who's vulnerable, and that includes the vulnerable people of North Korea. Um, unfortunately, funding over the last uh, years has been, as you can see, going down tremendously. And um, most of the funding that we uh, that is allocated to the to the humanitarian organisations working in North Korea is actually funds from uh, uh, SURF, which is the, the fund for humanitarian activities, which is actually under the umbrella of the of the UN. Very few member states are willing to to fundraise uh, and fund activities for for North Korea for political um, reasons. Uh, and despite the fact that in all the various sanctions, including the most recent ones, uh, it is said that the sanctions should not have an impact on humanitarian activities, they do, if not only indirectly, by not being able to fundraise for, for the activities. In the big scheme of things, the funds that we're asking for in DPRK are very small compared to what is required for Syria, Yemen, and other crises that are in the headlines. 2%, uh, for example, of what is required for, to meet the needs of the Syrian people, but nonetheless very difficult to, to obtain. Um, I think I'll leave it to that. If there is any question, I think I'm exactly on 15 minutes. Thank you for your attention.